Let us join together in singing our opening hymn, number 157, Glory in the Cross. We will sing the Holy Thursday verses 1, 2, and 3. Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ, our salvation. bow in homage to the Lord of life who was broken to make us whole. There is no greater love as blessed as this to lay down one's life for a friend. Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ and the triumph of God's grace. journey to the cross of Christ who surrendered glory and grace to become a servant of the great and small that all people may know God's face. Though his birth was divine, he knelt as a slave to wash common death of the Lord. Let us ever of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we come together this evening to join with the church in beginning the great Paschal Triduum, the Easter Triduum, these days in which we recall the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord. So as we come together for this celebration of the Eucharist, let us pause as we come before the Lord, seeking always to come in humility, especially for those times that we have sent. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share that lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. The lamb, it, you may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then the whole of it, assembly of Israel present. It shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and staff in hand. 
You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all of the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that the hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from the supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever is bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise God. Something is very different. Of course, in our lives, there are times in which we say this, and it is truly the case. Something is different, whether it be something that lasts for a few moments or for a longer period of time. Well, right now, in our country and throughout the world, there are many people that are saying those words. Something is different because of the coronavirus and all that it has led to as far as social distancing and taking certain precautions and hygiene and such like that, our lives have been not just somewhat, but greatly altered over these last few weeks and no doubt in the weeks to come. And what we do here in church is obviously somewhat different. Starting with the fact that we are not able to gather together in church as we normally do for the celebration of Mass on Sundays, Saturday nights, weekdays, and now for these special days, the days of the Easter Triduum. I'm ever so thankful that we have this opportunity to celebrate the Mass in Sacred Heart of Jesus Church 
and have you who are watching participate. Participate. Not just watch, but enter into both the prayers and the singing as if you were physically here with us this evening. For me, it is very different. And this, not only this liturgy, but the other liturgies of the Easter Triduum will be different this year. Starting with the reality that you will not be in the pews to celebrate these liturgies, but also in the fact that there are some aspects of these liturgies that have been going on for more years than anyone could count that will not be happening. Starting after this homily, there will not be the washing of the feet. That being with the reality that we do not have a congregation of diverse people in order to have them participate in this ancient ritual. And yet, when you think about it, you could say that the lesson that Jesus taught at the Last Supper, that lesson of humble service to others, which he certainly uh, performed in front of his disciples by washing their feet. The fact is, in the last number of weeks in our country, for sure, there have been many people who have modeled Jesus' example, humble service to others, humble service to the sick, doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals, those who have helped uh, the elderly, those who are most vulnerable to this sickness, who need to stay in, many have come to their aid, helping them with grocery shopping and other errands that perhaps they would have done on their own. Here in the village, we're so blessed to have people who normally neighbors looking out for neighbors, but in this instance, even more so, taking care of some of their basic needs. We're blessed in the fact that we can't do the foot washing uh, this year, but I say there are many who are practicing foot washing, not literally, but figuratively, in humbly giving of themselves to help others. And no doubt that will continue. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of the God who loved us so much that he sent Jesus into the world then we obviously will miss out on receiving Holy Communion, the body and blood of the Lord. And as difficult as I know that has been, especially perhaps for those who participate in Mass more than just on the weekend in these last number of weeks, the fact is it's even more pronounced tonight. Because it was on the night before he was betrayed that Jesus gave us himself. As St. Paul in today's second reading, the earliest account of the Last Supper given to us brought out Jesus telling his disciples, take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood of the covenant. Do this in memory of me. We continue to do this in memory of Jesus Priests are still celebrating Mass every day, every day except tomorrow, Good Friday, when we can't celebrate Mass but still have a liturgy of word and a veneration of the cross and reception of, communi of communion. But the reality is that in these times, we are called to hunger for Jesus in Holy Communion to hunger for Jesus, the bread of life, and look forward to the time, whenever that is, we hope in the near future, when we're able to receive 
Jesus' body and blood. Now, in this Mass and in all of our celebrations of the Eucharist, and even tomorrow, we're called to make a spiritual communion of indicating our hunger to have Jesus always there to satisfy us. We will not have the uh, transfer of the Eucharist today. Again, that's one thing with the realities of what's going on that we will not have. We will put Jesus in the tabernacle with a song at the end and hope you'll join in. And if you choose, you can, if you are in our area, come to church uh, from 7.30 to about 11 o'clock where you can have time for private prayer, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, a wonderful opportunity to follow that tradition. If you do come to church, we have a large church. We just ask you for sure to spread out, not be close to anybody uh, physically, and uh, practice hygiene as you come in and go out. It's been very difficult when I've celebrated Mass uh, every day and I come to the end of the Mass, the prayer after communion, because some of those prayers uh, speak as if someone has just received the Eucharist, received Jesus' body and blood. One prayer said, May your divine sacrament, O Lord, which we have received, Fill the inner depths of our heart and by its working mightily within us, make, our, make us partakers of its grace. For the first time in a long time, I really have been conscious as I have prayed that prayer and think about and pray for those of you, many of you, most of you, who are not able to go to communion Physically, Jesus' body and blood receive him at Mass. But then there are other passages like this one, the prayer after communion in early March. We pray, O Lord our God, that as you've given these most sacred mysteries to be the safeguard of our salvation, so you may make them a healing remedy for us, both now and in time to come. This indicating as important as the reception of Holy Communion is at every Mass, as much as we hunger and have that hunger satisfied for, with Jesus giving himself to us in Holy Communion, the fact is when we participate in Mass, as you are doing so today and as I hope you're doing so at home in the various ways that you can participate in Mass on the weekends or even daily, the reality is that there are many blessings connected with our participation in the sacred mysteries. As that prayer said, to safeguard, be the safeguard of our salvation, that they would be a healing remedy for us, which they truly are at every Mass that we participate in. Today's uh, prayer uh, over the gifts says, Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, whenever we participate in the Holy Eucharistic celebration, in prayer, in listening and reflecting on the word and in song, the work of our redemption is being accomplished. And we are part of the body of Christ, normally gathered together in body, but now gathered together in spirit and participating in a way that is beneficial to each one of us and beneficial to the redemption and salvation of the whole world. One final thing, priesthood. Tonight is also the celebration of the ministerial priesthood, 
when Jesus told his disciples, do this in remembrance of me. I must say that as a priest of almost 34 years, this by far is the most unique uh, Triduum, Lent, most of the Lenten season, and into the Easter season that I've ever been a part of. Challenging, I know, for myself and for all priests who are right now restricted from doing some of the ministries that are so important that we love. Ministries of visiting the sick, bringing them Holy Communion, and other aspects of what we are called to be and to do. I deeply uh, am sorrowful that I can't do some of those ministries now, and I'm ever grateful that I am able to do other important ministries. The Sacrament of Reconciliation, whether it be here in church, if you come to the chapel, or we're going to have a couple opportunities more to do it in the safety and security of your car, what we call drive-through reconciliation. And we have the wonderful opportunity to preach God's Word, to immerse ourselves in the words of Jesus, the words of life, the words of hope, the words of peace. Something reflecting on that word that we can all do during this most challenging time and let the Lord bring us comfort and bring us strength through his word until we're able to also receive the wonderful strength he gives us in holy communion. I'd like to end with this uh, couple of verses of this song that I believe was penned by St. Thomas Aquinas, great um, spiritual and intellectual giant of the Middle Ages who had a great love for Holy Communion and talked about the Eucharist. And this song, we perhaps know in Latin, but to me, the English verses are so important and so significant in this time in which we're living, and especially with the opportunity we have to be Christ for others, to be the ones who wash each other's feet now and long after this pandemic is over. It goes like this. Holy and living bread, wondrous food from heaven sent, God's sacrifice foretold, now in his our hands we hold. Sign and reality, challenge for us to be humble servants to all. all the poor. And let us please stand. And I hope if you're at home uh, participating in this, that you take the positions that we normally take at Mass, sitting and standing, and if you can, later on for the Eucharistic prayer, kneeling. But at this time, ever confident that God loves us, cares for us, and wants us to truly trust in Him in this and in all times, we come before Him humbly with these prayers and petitions. That all clergy and lay people in the church will follow Christ's example in all ways, especially in humble service to others 
including those most in need in this time of the coronavirus pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who serve the public good will come together and work together for the benefit of all, and especially those who are working as health care workers, policemen, and firemen, and all those essential workers who are in positions where they might be infected. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this unique and difficult Holy Week will be observed and participated in by people of faith to the best of their ability and find their faith growing stronger through the grace of God and the encouragement and hope-filled example of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who were to receive the sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil and now will be delayed in doing so, for our priests who will recall tonight the institution of the ministerial priesthood, and for the young people preparing for First Communion or Confirmation, especially those in our parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially members of our family and our parish family, including Gerald Krasinski. For those around the world with the coronavirus, including former parishioner Bernie Kernan. And for those who have recently died, especially Tom Garache of our parish, and for all who are currently grieving the loss of a loved one and of not being able to have a funeral liturgy for them right now. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our inability to receive the body and blood of the Lord on this Holy Thursday and the unknown time ahead will not discourage us, but instead lead us to a greater appreciation of the gift of the Eucharist which is the food we need for our journey to the banquet feast of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people and needs we each have tonight that we present to the Lord in the quiet of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those celebrating birthdays on this Holy Thursday, especially those of our parish family, uh, for Marilyn Allen, Patricia Baker, Liana Vernon, and Joe Wybrella, the father of Kathy Silk, uh, for whom this Mass is being offered today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving Father, you call us to share in this Eucharistic celebration, this sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for us and for all the world. May we recognize the richness that is there for us when we participate in this Eucharistic celebration tonight and always. May we enter into these days of the Triduum, ever resolved to grow in union with you and appreciation of your Son's death and resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Christ is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of this everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh which was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And then when we drink this blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end.
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving him thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Let us now stand in prayer. Grant Almighty God that just as we have been renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity. Lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We thank you for uh, participating in this match from wherever you are this evening. Uh, again, a reminder that this evening here at St. Bernard Church from 7.30 till 11 p.m. If you want to come and pray, the blessed sacrament will be in the tabernacle, and you're welcome to do so. Again, social distancing and good hygiene. And we will have the uh, liturgy Good Friday uh, tomorrow at 3 o'clock. You'll be able to access it at 3 o'clock tomorrow. And after that, you're welcome to come to church and venerate the cross, bowing, uh, genuflecting, uh, any form of reverence except not touching the cross and not kissing the cross. That's, again, something uh, not Friday doesn't seem to be able to not do that, but given the times we're in right now, we cannot. So we can venerate it in other ways without touching or kissing uh, the cross. God bless. We will now have the reposition of the Blessed Sacrament in the tabernacle. That will end our uh, time together today. We won't have the normal uh, dismissal, blessing and dismissal, as this liturgy of Trinity continues.
continues on tomorrow. You might say a, a pause, and then we'll resume the liturgy tomorrow afternoon. Please join in singing number 25, Down in Adoration Falling. The verses are number 5 and 6. Thank you. 